Hi everyone. I just wanted to talk a little bit about the solar eclipse that we just had yesterday. This is actually a video that I had done last year when, when there was a solar eclipse on Nissan 1. And this year we just had another one, which would, you know, I don't know if there's been a new chart made, but I'm just using this old one right here. But if we had a new chart made, there would be another solar total solar eclipse you know right over here after this sign which was tabernacles so as you can see God has marked the the signs from you know Passover and then tabernacles and then Nisan 1 which is the head of the biblical calendar and then again on Passover a blood moon and then another solar eclipse on the first of the year on the agricultural calendar, which is the Feast of Trumpets. And then again on Tabernacles. And then if this is supposed to be the true Nissan one, if it was supposed to have started yesterday, then this would have marked Nissan one once again. So God has placed another sign in the in the sky for us to pay attention to and if you look over here it states in Genesis 1 14 it says and God said let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years and the word seasons here is the Hebrew word moed which actually means the the feast days so god has um used the signs to the the signs in the heavens to mark the appointed times or the feast days such as the passover and the passover is based on you know determining when the beginning when the first of nisan begins so you know, it's very possible that this solar eclipse that we just had yesterday is marking the true Nissan one. Of course, you know, we don't know that for sure. You know, some calendars state that there shouldn't have been a second Adar added this year. But according to the calendar that's used in Israel, that's based on the Hillel calendar. And according to that calendar, they've added a second Adar this year. Of course, the Hillel calendar is just based on a formula of adding. I believe it's every, I don't know if it's every seven years. I think our, our leap years are added every seven years, but they have a certain number of leap years added over a course of, I think, 21 years. I mean, don't quote me on that. I don't remember exactly how their leap years are formulated, but it's based on a formula. Whereas in the scriptures, we're supposed to be basing the first of the month is supposed to be based on observances, such as the signs, you know, in the sun and the moon and the stars and, you know, whether the barley has ripened or not. And you know, based on the equinox, which again is based on the signs of the sun and the moon, how that's determined. So, you know, we just have, you know, certain dates that we've applied, you know, based on formulas for all these events. But according to the scriptures, these dates are supposed to be marked by observances. So, like I said, I don't know if the true Nissan one is supposed to be yesterday or if it if we still have another month you know before Nissan one begins but then of course the Passover is 14 to 15 days later so you know during these two months you know we should be preparing for the Passover if the true Nissan one just occurred yesterday so we need to be on you know high alert during this time and I just wanted to show you a calendar that, or actually a, a chart that was made by Overcomer. And what she has done is she discovered that 
the blood moons are actually si exactly six months apart one from another and if you start the cycle from the blood moon then the first cycle would be you know starting from the first to the second and then the second to the third and then the third to the fourth and then six months from the fourth would you know be that last cycle and that particular cycle would end on March 22nd so if it's exactly six months apart then that's when this cycle would end but of course I don't know if in God's mercy if he's going to be using the Hillel calendar which is what the the Jews are observing and you know give everyone another month or if this is the true uh, Nisan one that just occurred and then the, the true Passover will begin on March 22nd I'm, I'm not sure which is the case but we need to be prepared either way and um, also wanted to point out that I forgot to mention what Overcomer has likened these blood moons to is the four night watches. Um, during the night when someone's supposed to, to keep watch, the, the night is divided into four watches um, beginning from 6 p.m. and you know going all the way to 6 a.m. the following morning. So you know this is the the time that someone is supposed to keep watch during the night and they've broken it down into different shifts so that you know if you know the watchman you know needs to get some sleep you know someone else will come in on another shift so that's why the the night watch was broken down into four segments but there's others who have speculated that the four blood moons may also represent the four cups of the Passover and I want to show you that in just a second okay over here in this link you see the four cups of the Passover and it tells you what the the four different cups represent the first one is the cup of sanctification the second one is the cup of deliverance the third is the cup of redemption and the fourth is the cup of restoration now these first two apply to the first exodus when when the Jews were, were brought out of Egypt or delivered out of you know slavery Egyptian slavery and then the third cup which is a cup of redemption is when Christ came to redeem us this is the the cup that Christ drank from when when he prayed to the Father right before you know the crucifixion when he said you know he prayed to the Father to let the cup pass from him but not for his will to be done for the Father's will to be done and of course um, Jesus submitted to the will of the Father and he did drink from the the cup of redemption and that is when you know he paid the price for our sins on the cross and I believe that um, that's actually why when when he was off when he asked for water and he was offered the the vinegar I believe that's why Jesus drank from the the vinegar even though he knew he you know of course he's God so he knows everything so he knew they weren't giving him him water but he drank from it anyway just to fulfill that cup the cup of redemption and then of course Jesus said you know at the Last Supper that he would not drink again until from the fruit of the wine until he drinks it anew with all of us in his kingdom and then that would be the cup of restoration so that would be the the only cup that's that's remaining so if you go back to this chart over here um, you'll see that it would actually make more sense for <clears throat> the Lord to return after the fourth cup or the fourth blood moon if if the blood moons do represent the four cups of the Passover because at this solar eclipse um, this would have been just before the third cup 
which is the cup of redemption, which has already occurred. So after this blood moon, this would signify the fourth cup. So it would make more sense if this final segment of the blood moons, if it is representing the fourth cup, which is the cup of restoration for the Lord to return after this particular sign and not this one. I believe this middle sign here was just to denote what this entire sign of the four blood moons represents. It presents the the crowning of the the king, which is what, you know, if you watch this video, I, I did this last year, but a lot of the imagery is still the same in this in this video. So I'm just going to try to skip over to where it talks about that over here you can see that a solar eclipse actually looks like a crown. This is actually what happens is when the moon goes before the sun, it blocks out the light of the sun and then you can actually see the aura of the sun which is you know hidden from the rays of the suns you know all the other times but when a solar eclipse occurs it blocks out the light of the sun so you can actually see the aura or the atmosphere of the sun and this um, it's actually the the plasma but it's called a corona which is the Latin word for crown so the solar eclipse is seems to represent a crown and if you look at this link right here, it explains that one of the names of the month of Nisan is the month of kings. It says here the first of Nisan is counted as the new year for the purpose of counting the reign of kings in Israel. So it's not that the king will actually reign on the first of Nisan. They don't necessarily have to begin their reign on that date. That's just the date from which the reign is reckoned. In addition, the month of Nisan is known as the month of redemption because this is the month that the Jews were redeemed from Egypt. And here this is depicted in the imagery of the Passover in Exodus 12:13, where it says, The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you are, and when I see the blood, I will pass over you. Well, this was all a picture of Christ being the, the sacrificial lamb that would not only cover our sins, but, you know, it's, it's the protection that covered the Jews to protect them from the plagues of the Passover and it will also be what protects us from the plagues that are yet to come in the end time Passover. Also this imagery right here it also represents or it looks like it represents the the crowning of a birth um, you know when a birth of, of a baby is about to take place um, and the head you know is about to pass through th the opening it's called the crowning and so this looks you know almost like it's showing imagery of a birth that is about to take place and there is a birth that's about to take place which would be the the birth of the Messiah as as Lord of Lords and King of Kings and there's also a birth that's about to take place which is the birth of a holy nation which is the bride of Christ that the scriptures tell us will rule and reign with Christ for a thousand years so that birth is about to take place and the solar eclipse also looks like a wedding ring or an engagement ring. So all of this symbolism is still applicable and it seems to be even more applicable now with um, the final blood moon having passed. And I'm going to go ahead and end this video here, but I'll um, talk some more about this in the next video. Thank you.